James Bessinger. Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Hi, how are y'all doing? Thank you for taking my call. Um, I just want to say I know I speak on behalf of a lot of people, and I, I, I think it is absolutely laughable that you all still feel the need to hide behind computer screens to avoid facing the people of this city who deserve to see you face to face and and deal with you about a few things. Uh, you felt the need to raise taxes on homeowners and businesses on an unprecedented level to save the city. You borrowed $40 million. You spent $27 million on a parking garage built on land you gave away. You've taken actions that have led to businesses closing and families losing their homes. On top of all that, now you pay unsworn officers to patrol our streets, harass our residents, and steal even more money out of their pockets while they're trying to fade their families and keep the roofs over their heads. You should all be ashamed of the way you've handled this entire mask ordinance bullshit. It's, it's a joke. You've made a laughing stock of our city. And you, it, it's clear that because you don't know how to manage an economy, you now want to go out of the way to take more money from the people. And that, that's a shame. You should be ashamed of yourself. And this, this city really deserves better. Thank you. Hi, this is, Jen- this is Jennifer Trudeau. I'm sorry, I was having a malfunction. Can, can I still speak? Yes, ma'am. Please proceed. Hi. Uh, thank you very much for um, allowing me to speak. I just want to raise the issue of the mandates and the ordinances that you guys are talking about. I am a little bit dismayed at the ignoring the detrimental effects that this is having to our society, uh, to our children, and in particular to people like me who are being harassed by the livability officers in front of our children when we have uh, medical conditions. And I don't understand why the livability department is employed with enforcing the ordinances and they are not including the medical exemptions and the religious exemptions that they have in the ordinance. And it seems to me that there's not a lot of training involved in this uh, ordeal. And I think that that's a pretty bad situation when you leave mothers with medical conditions and their terrified children being harassed and threatened with the police over not wearing a mask. Um, Also, I know that you guys have received a cease and desist letter from my lawyer, as well as a FOIA, a Freedom of Information Act request, uh, with several points of information that we're requesting. And I look forward to your guys' personal response. I know that we haven't received one from you yet, although the corporate attorney has sent one. And I'm really looking forward to some sort of back and forth here. And hopefully we can work together to make sure that everybody is treated fairly and equally in this situation. And thank you very much. Phone and online. And those were sent to council in advance of the meeting. 22 people opposed extending the mask mandate and an additional 60 days and said mask wearing should be optional. Five people asked to extend the mask mandate for an additional 60 days. The healthcare workers are working timelessly to vaccinate people and to discontinue the mandate would be selfish and uncaring. Um, we need to be reasonable about this, Mr. Mayor. Now, hypothetically, if they were livability officers, I guess they would come in here and write us a, 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 a citation. But there's no science that says a person who's been vaccinated, a person who's tested negative, that's 14, 15 feet apart, is a danger to anybody. I will never go back. Councilman Sheely is right. Lives have changed. I will always have a mask. Uh, I don't know that I would ever go back. We used to look at some of the, um, and I say this respectfully, some of the people on, from Asian societies walking around with masks on. And you know what? Some of us used to, used to laugh. 